Welcome Vikings! By now, Valheim has sold millions and millions of copies of the game and people such as yourself hopefully are enjoying it tremendously. Sometimes people play single player, but sometimes they wish to play with friends. It is a great co-op game after all. So how do you best enjoy playing with your friends? Well, there are a few ways. This video will go through the options for running a server and steps of how to set it up. I will cover firstly how to set up a dedicated server through Steam Client on your local PC. I will then go through how to do it through a hosted rented server through PingPerfect. And finally, I'll end up with setting up on a local dedicated server using Steam Command, which is a bit more advanced but gives you full control over because it's a command line install and you can have full control over when you update it and all the location and everything, which can be sometimes very useful. This video might be a bit dry, it deals with the unsexy pieces under the hood, the engine of it, so do bear with me. If you do find it useful, go ahead and consider hitting that like button, subscribe to my channel, and beyond that I do have a bunch of other Valheim videos in the playlist which is at the top of the description of this video. They range from game mechanics to server videos. So back to the topic of servers. Obviously the easiest is simply to go into the client, start the server there and play with friends. However, that has some pros and cons. For one, if your client crashes, which thankful seems to be super rare in Valheim, the server will drop. But significantly, it also means that your friends can only play when you are playing. If you log out, that's it, server is down. There are alternatives, such as having a local dedicated server. It's run in a separate process on your computer, or maybe spare computer, so you can run it whenever the PC is on, 24 7, certain hours, it's up to you. Since you don't need to play at the same time, it gives more freedom to friends to connect and play. It is a great cheap alternative for semi-regular gaming sessions, although not everyone wants to pay for electricity to keep their PC running around the clock. That's where a hosted solution comes in. You pay the provider a monthly sum to run the service, including bandwidth, electricity, maintenance and all of that. It's usually around 13 to 15 USD a month, depending on location and specs. So it's a coffee a person for a small gaming group only, which is not a lot. In return, the server runs 24 seven. It's always available when someone in the group wants to play. Want to spend an hour exploring the swamp? Not a problem, connect and play, even if the others in the tribe are asleep. Well, maybe you'll be grinding materials, which is more the Valheim way, but it is a very convenient alternative for the player, however, it has a small cost. I personally use Ping Perfect, and this video is not a sponsored video for them by any means, and I have been using them for many years across many games such as Seven Days to Die, Valheim, Conan, Ark, and so on. I have a link and a 10% monthly discount code in the description below. The third alternative is to set up a local dedicated, but instead of using the Steam client, it's using the command line to install. This is convenient from a control perspective as you determine the folders, when to update, and you have the control of what's really happening. It is inconvenient in the sense that it has more manual steps, but if you only want to set up on a spare computer, for instance, it can be really straightforward because the game server itself does not require Steam login. In other words, you don't need to buy a second game copy just to run the server. So some people prefer Steam command even though there, there are more steps to go through to set it up. So let's dive into the first, meaning to set up a local dedicated server as part of Steam UI. As you can see, we're in the Steam client itself and that's where you need to go. You need to go to where it says games and you need to, well you can untick games and you select tools which will bring up all the different servers that are available depending on what your games you have installed. We're going to look at Valheim dedicated server. All you need to do is hit install and it will calculate the disk space and I'm going to say yes, just install it. And depending on your internet connection that might take you something from 10 seconds up to a few minutes. Now we've done the first step, very important. Don't hit launch, don't do that. Now you wanna to go to the dedicated server, right click. And we're gonna do properties. We're then gonna go local files and browse. What this brings us is to well, Valheim dedicated server is installed on your PC, which you just specified a while ago. This is not where the save is. I'll go through where that one is in just a moment. But you can mention, you can look here at the PDF, just double click it and open it up. And this is actually pretty good because a lot of games don't have this. This will tell you how to do it, how to download, how to how to run it and start it and configure it, and especially if you're using Linux. I'm going to go through on Windows, but Linux will have some information here on how to do it. But once you've had a look at that one, you want to look at this start headless server dot bat and that's a batch file. We're going to right click and we're going to edit it. And this file is really important and it even says make a local copy of this script. So we're going to actually do that. We're going to right click it and we're going to do 
copy and we're going to control V and paste. Why do you want to do that? Well, so I'm going to edit the name and I say active. The reason being is that if you update the game server, it will refresh this one, which means you'll lose the settings. So don't do that. Make sure you have a copy of it before you update it, because otherwise you'll lose, for instance, the game name, passwords and stuff like that, which can be a little bit tedious. So once we have this copy, we're going to then edit it and look through it. It will tell you it's going to start the Valum server. No graphics, obviously. Batch node name. This is the name of the server. So let me do something like this. I'm going to say VADUE42 server. This is going to be the name that you will see in the server browser. Port. Default is 2456. World. This is the actual name of the save file. So let's say, say something like VADUE uh, game save one. That one will match the actual folder that we'll be looking at a little bit in a while in the save directory. And of course, that password. Make sure, as I said, minimum password length is five characters. If you do it less, it might not start. It might not allow you to play. So let's do this. Secret vid password. Something like that. We're going to save. Done. It has a couple of additional information in here that we are going to take note of because it says you need to make sure the ports 2456 to 2458 is being forwarded to your server through your local router and firewall. But for now, just save this file and just keep an eye on the ports that you need to do. At this point, you need to find the manual for your router if you've never done it. It will tell you how to do port forwarding. In my case, it looks something like this. I will specify the name. I'll specify the ports TCP and UDP 2456-2458. Always allow all. And this is my local PC IP address. I save it and I enable it. And that means that people will be able to connect from outside my network and the server browser will be able to pick it up as well. And if you've done that, you're actually pretty much done. We double click here, the bat file. It will start loading things up. It will say that... Well, it will start saying some things that it can do, can create the convex mesh. Don't really worry about that one. A lot of these things is basically just warnings that oh, it can find a particular library. But unless there's an error, things should be working fine. It'll take maybe a couple of minutes for it to start up. If you're running it for the first time, keep in mind, often Windows will pop up a Windows Defender firewall notice and asking you, do you want to allow access? And you should say, yes, allow access. If you do not, it will have problems communicating with, well, the server browser for one. So make sure you hit allow access. Since I've done that already, it's not going to pop it up again, but I managed to take a picture of it. Once it's loaded everything, you'll see a line that says game server connected. And that means you actually are up and running. So what do we do now? Well, go to start game. I'm going to use my vet test character here and start. Now, once you're here, don't don't do this. Don't load any of this one because the client is actually picking up the games that you actually have already saved on your hard disk. So don't do that. You should do join game. And if you remember, my name was something of, well, there you see it, VDUE42 server. Left click, connect. And here it'll ask for the password. So we're going to do a secret vet password and hit enter. Let's see. Loading in. And I feel cold. Oh, that seems to be what happens all the time. And you can see I am now running on my server. If I check the window that I have here, it'll just pop up a bunch of information. There. So there's a new peer connected, blah, blah, and all, all those things. Let me just close the client for a moment. How do you then shut down? Well, actually, it's set it in the beginning or it's in the PDF. You do a control C and it will finalize, shut it down. Terminate batch job. Yes. And I mentioned I would tell you where the saves are actually at. And normally it's under your app data, local low, Iron Gate, Valheim world. And you'll see all these different ones are all the different saves. So dedicated is one, the default one, dum de dum is a test one I made, Vedad Vikings, Vedui save game, different saves. And it has basically the FWL, I believe is the, the random generated world, and the DB is the actual save with the, all your buildings. And these are actually the files that if you're transferring them from one PC to another, from one server to another, these are the files, these two are the ones that you want to copy. And incidentally, these are the ones you take a backup of well. So when you finish the session, you can actually go here, shut down the server, and then zip them up or something and put them for storage. So now we've covered the simple way of setting up in Steam UI and running it. But how about if you prefer to rent the server and let them worry about everything instead of you? Well, let's head over to the Pink Perfect website. Link is in the description below. Don't forget to take note of the discount code if you do try this out.
First thing is that we go to the Pink Perfect site by hitting that link. And we're going to scroll down here to, and this way, if you do want to do a seven day Sedai server, Arc, or whatever, you can do that as well. It has Rust, Daisy, etc., Minecraft. But we're just going to go to Valheim. If you want to, you can actually do a 48 hour trial as well. That might be worthwhile. But let's uh, look down further here. It will go through a bunch of the features, such as the instant server setup, which was actually really fast, global locations, backup, enterprise hardwareing, FTP, free web, web hosting is actually pretty good. You have your game panel, good customer support, money back, game switching, DDoS protection. Of course, you have a mobile control panel as well for your tablet or your phone. But we're going to choose here from 131 US dollars per month. On the right side, you'll see the auto summary is going to start at 13.10. It's 130 per player. And we're going to go down here a little bit. You can choose if you want to do, want to do a longer billing cycle. It will give you a discount. So uh, consider that if you actually want to have a longer 3612, you can otherwise just start with do it monthly by monthly. You can choose the location. Now, it doesn't really matter. Don't do the extreme performance. You shouldn't have to do that. But let's try USA Atlanta. If you want to get a little bit of a discount, do branding by Pink Perfect, and we will get a little bit of a discount here on the right side, which will make it a little bit cheaper. You'll see 69 cents off per month. If you want to host on an SSD, which makes loading a little bit faster, consider putting that on. Support level, leave it at standard. Slots is where if you want to have more, you can increase it, but if you're just playing with friends, just start at 10. Game priority, you should be fine at just normal priority, actually. Put in your host name. Let's do my server, and we're gonna do server password one two three four five. Now you can actually change the server game name later on, but it's quite tedious because it requires raising a ticket, and they have to change the folder structure because that's how the Valheim server right now is managed. And it's nothing to do with Pink Perfect. It's just simply how the server is working because it's still early days for it. But with this, we're gonna do continue. Once we're here, review what you've ordered, make sure you're getting in the correct location. You can change all these things, but it's a little bit more tedious than just getting it right from the start. 1241 monthly, not too bad if you're sharing with a few friends and we're going to hit check out. Of course, you have to fill in all your details of who you are, your address, of course, because it's a billing account. They're going to charge you and then you can decide, do you do a credit card? Do you do PayPal, Skrill or pay safe card? I don't, I never used that. Maybe it's some European thing. And once you fill that out, you hit complete order and they will start in the back end to just set things up. It'll take a few minutes, but it actually shouldn't take very long. Pink Perfect will mail out the details in an email to whichever email you put in. It'll tell you how you log into the panel, how you gain access to it with a username and password. It will have the connection info here, which will tell you where you connect it. It'll also have query info and FTP if you actually want to FTP it, which you probably shouldn't need to unless you're actually putting an old save on it or you're pulling the save off as a backup. It's a bunch of buttons here and none of them are really necessary initially. You just want to make sure you start and stop it. Configuration files, if you want to later on change some of the password or the folder name. If you want to update it, let's say there's an update on Steam. You use this one, you click update your server from Steam. Backup data, something you probably should do every few days. If you want to ban or unban IP addresses, let's say your friends are causing a lot of problems, but you know, don't give out that password. But at this point, all you need to do, hit start and it will start up the server. As you can see, it's simple to get a hosted server. Well, what about the final option of using Steam command? Take note, there's a bunch of commands to type in. If you miss something, stop the video, rewatch it and follow step by step. You can do it. But first of all, you need to download Steam command, which is a Steam application that is run from the command prompt. The link is in the description here for the Steam. And then there's a link down here to the installer. It's a zip file that you click on and download. And once you've downloaded it, I would recommend put it on C drive and make a folder called Steam command to put it inside because all the things are going to be extracted in there. Basically go into it, take a copy of it and then go back and paste it. And now you have Steam command. You're not going to run it here because it requires the command prompt. So go and open a command prompt and we then navigate to the correct folder and we do here and you see Steam command is there. I'm gonna run it and it will actually start to install itself because it's more than just that exe file. It's the whole Steam command system that Steam has developed, which is actually really powerful for installing a bunch of the servers that they actually provide. After a while, it'll be done. And then we're gonna do a login anonymous. They can spell that correctly. And that basically say, tells the Steam servers that actually your anonymous login, you're not using your, your user ID, your Steam ID, because you generally don't need to do that for server download. Once you've done that, and of course you need to log in, otherwise you can't download anything. Once you've done that, you do a force install directory, C Steam command and the Valheim, because that creates the directory structure that it's actually going to be putting everything inside. 
And now we're ready to install it. We do app underscore update 896660, which is the Valheim server. It will start downloading it and installing it in the location that we just set up here, the Valheim folder. It will take a while. It's about a one gigabyte download. So once that is done, we just exit because we don't need that one anymore. And we're going to minimize this when I'm going to minimize this as well. I am then going to be bringing up the actual Steam command folder that you can see is install Steam command. All this is Steam command handling that and Valheim folder that we just set before. And this is the Valheim server. First thing to do, we're going to make a copy of the start bat file. We're going to make this the active one. The reason being is that if you update this server again, and the way to update again is just go into Steam command again, run the app update 89660 again, and it will update the latest version. But if you do that, it will overwrite everything you have in here, including the bat file that you probably have edited to specify your world name, etc. So make a copy of that one. Otherwise, it will vanish once there's an update that you're doing. But open up the bat file, edit it, and you'll see uh, some tips here that tells you about which ports you need to forward, and we'll get into that in a little bit. It tells, tells you that you need to have a, a password as at least five characters. So we're going to see here, this is just my server name. It can be whatever it is. Port 2456 is the standard port. You can actually change that, but I would just leave it if you don't need to. The world. So we're going to change it. This is the name which corresponds to the save file. So we're going to call it a game instead. I shall read this game like that. And password is not going to be secret. We're going to change it to very secret one. So basically, we have now the name, just what it's called. But we have this is the same file, Vidui's game, with the password very secret one. Done. Save that, and you've edited the bad file. Now, here you can actually have a look. There's some more information here. If you want to have more information, double click and open up the PDF file. And here you'll have a bunch of information about how the server won, how to run it, and the recommendation to make a copy of the file. There'll be some, some information about the different options that you have, the port, the number, the world, the password, and all that stuff as well. So you can have a look at this as well. It just gives you some additional information. But essentially, it's been installed. So we're going to double click the bat file here. It's saying starting server, and it says that type Control Z to actually exit the server. We're not going to do that yet. We're going to do that later on when we shut things down, but just let things load. It will tell you that, hey, I have a new server here. Don't lock it in the Defender firewall. Make sure you hit allow access because if you don't do that, it will be blocked. And the next time you try, it will not generally prompt you for this. So don't hit cancel, hit allow access. Otherwise, you're going to have to add that manually, which is a lot more tedious. So we're going to do that. Yes, allow access. It's still building up here. And finally, it says game server connected, and that means it has been started up. And that covers the last alternative. But now you should have a solid view of the different options and how to actually get them to set up. I recommend trying with a local server, and if you run into too many issues, port forwarding is usually a pain point which is really tough to fix because you require to understand your router and how to do the port forwarding there. If you have issues, check your manual, Google online for help with port forwarding and your particular brand and model of the router. But if you still have an issue, consider using a hosted solution. I do hope you will find this video helpful in your effort to set up a server. If you do, don't forget that like and subscribe. And check out the playlist for other server and game mechanic videos. Good luck, Viking! Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedic community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.